slurry here and back. So I'm gonna do a start a new reading vlog. I have been struggling with my like reading the last two to three weeks, really the whole month of August. I haven't really felt connected to any of the books I was reading. The last book I picked up was Pride and Premeditation, which wasn't even really on my TBR, and I love that book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a five-star reading prediction vlog using my TBR Space Summer Camp thing as sort of like a prompt, guys. So I'm going to roll a dice, see what prompt I land on, and then choose a five-star read prediction in that category. So let's see what I wind up getting. Ooh, three. All right. One, two, three. Ooh, it's a graphic novel. Ooh, I may be able to find something for that. So I will be right back. I have a cheat, but I have wanted to continue with the Percy Jackson series, and I have read book one recently. So I think I'm just going to pick up the graphic novel of um, Percy Jackson and The Lightning Thief and see how I feel about it. I've had this for so long. I think I got this from my school and it's really, really not that long. But I have read a couple of times Lightning Thief, and then I just never sort of continued on. So this might give me the motivation to sort of read this and then pick up Sea of Monsters physically or audio because I have read Lightning Thief before. So I think that this will probably be a five-star read, especially because I really do enjoy the story and I do like graphic novel interpretation. So I am going to pick up this one and see where we get to. So I'm going to start reading it, um, and I will update you guys when maybe I'm like halfway done to give you guys my thoughts. So I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye, friends. I picked this one up. It is literally like an adaptation of The Lightning Thief, but it's been so long since I read this book, but I love, I'll just show you guys like a picture, but I love the art styles in these. I've read a couple of adaptations of graphic novels, and I actually do want to do a few more. I really do want to do a classic graphic novel reading vlog because I struggle with classics a lot. I just do. It's just, it's, I'm not a classic reader, but I do like the story. So I might try to find a couple and do like a reading vlog for you guys, maybe in the, maybe like in like the winter. But really I'm liking this. I'm about halfway done. I just, I like it. I, I'm really happy to like revisit the story a little bit because it's been a bit and I definitely do want to continue reading the series. So really happy with this so far. And I think I have... The other one's at my job. I don't remember if they're still there. I think I got a couple of graphic novels, and I'm pretty sure I left them at my job. So when I go back in September, I'll probably bring them home. But really liking this. I'm about halfway done. They are about to go to Manhattan, which is exciting. Um, yeah, but this writing style is really, really cool. And this one is written by, um, adapted by Robert Vendente. But really liking it so far and happy that I picked it up. So I'm going to go probably finish the rest of this keep watching some booktube videos. I'm probably going to take a walk at some point. Um, I am going to the city tomorrow, but I do want to walk again, and I haven't walked pretty much all weekend, so yeah. I'll see you guys when I'm done with this with this graphic novel. Bye, friends. I wind up quickly finishing The Lightning Thief, um, which is the graphic novel representation. I really like this book. Probably give it like five stars just because I thought it was a solid representation of the story. I really thought like the pictures were really interesting and cool, and I thought that it did a couple of things like a little bit different, especially the tail end of the story was a little bit different from the actual novelization, if I'm remembering correctly, but I liked it. I thought it was great, and I think that like if you're trying to get kids into reading and they're a little bit intimidated by the size of The Lightning Thief, I don't know how many pages these books are, but it's like not, it's like maybe like 120 pages. Very, very quick read, representation of the story. Um, and I think definitely better than like a movie representation, but it's very, very quick, very, very easy read. And I would definitely read more in this series once I like actually refresh myself on the actual series because it's been a bit, but this is the one book I've read the most. I think I've listened to this book like four to five times and I've just never continued. But I like this. I'm going to go for a little bit of a walk, read one of, listen to one of my audiobooks while it's not as hot out take my water with me, and then when I come back, we will choose my next five-star read prediction for this vlog. I definitely did not plan on reading this today, but definitely fun, and I like the game that I'm doing. So, when we come back, we'll, ch we'll chat, and we'll see what I'm going to read next. Bye-bye. Okay. here, I'm back. I just could to go for a walk. I listened to a little bit of my audiobook, which is called Enchanted Ink. It's a really old contemporary story with, like, a magical twist. Basically, you follow this main character, and she is revealed to be, basically, she sees all magic, um, and she kind of gets hired by this magical company to also act as like an outside source so like she she can see magic she's not affected by it but she can sort of tell when things are going wrong 
So it's a really, really quick listen. I got that book recommendation so long ago from Book Hype, which isn't even around anymore, but it's just a very, very quick listen. So I'm going to pick another five-star reproduction from my TBR and Beyond Space Summer Camp Board. Um, and let's see what category I'm gonna try to pick a five-star reproduction from, and we will see what I get. Two. All right, so contemporary will be it. And I have a couple of books as an option, but let me go see if I find anything that's like really intriguing to me, but I will come back with my choice and we'll chat through it. Hi friends. I need to read a contemporary book because I've literally done this role like two different times because I didn't really think I had any contemporary books that I thought were a five-star reproduction at this moment, but I am going to do As If On Cue by Marissa Cantor. I got this, actually I got an e-arc of this book through NetGalley, but I could only read it on my phone, so my friend had an extra copy and she gave it to me when I met up with her in the city. So this is the one, I read her, um, um, what if, what I like about you, which would have to do with like book blogging, and this has to do with musical theater, which I'm a theater teacher, and I really liked her first book, and this is like rivalry, and has to do with like a prank war, and I hope that I really enjoy it, but I literally just picked this book up this week, so this is what I'm going to start. I'm probably going to like eat some dinner, do some other things, and then start reading this, but this I'm really excited for. I really did enjoy her, her debut. Like I thought it was super fun. I think I read it in like a day when I was coming back from ALA the last time I was at a convention, but I'm excited to pick this one up. It's been a bit since I read anything like theater related, and I'm hopeful but not like getting my hopes up that maybe this year they'll let me do a show at my, at my at my middle school, but this will be a nice palette cleanser as well. And I literally just returned Kate and Waiting from Becky Abitrali, which, which would have been perfect for this, but I'm gonna start this one and I'll give you guys my thoughts when I read about like 50 pages. I remember when I read it, um, What I Like About You, I like loved it from the first page. So we will see how I feel it's a, about a five-star reproduction and I'll update you guys when I read a little bit of it. Bye friends do a quick update because I just literally just started as a fun cue but right off the bat this is a really unique book that looks at the art scene just in general like arts in schools and as a teacher I relate a lot to this funding is a big thing in the arts I don't really have a budget for my shows <laughs> so you know basically what happens is Natalie and Reed Natalie she comes from a very very big art family her dad works as like the conductor at her high school her mom is a writer and she doesn't see the arts as a viable career path but she likes to have fun and she likes to put up shows but when her theater budget is cut she and her friends decide that they are going to put like make their own show like they're not going to like rely on rights because it's really really expensive which is definitely something i know a lot about um we have to rely on rights for our shows and it can get pretty expensive if you don't have grants but she's told that she, like, there's no money for her show. And it's just, like, it's very disheartening to hear that sometimes. Like, I know as a teacher myself, I have to put a lot of money, especially for my own shows, for the shows that I put up. Um, but I do it for the kids because I think the kids really enjoy it. Um, but right off the bat, I'm really thinking it's a very interesting look at the art scene in a high school or, like, a middle school. And I love that. I never really see that. You always see the beautiful side of the arts and why the arts are so helpful when I read these books like I'm trying to think of some other ones like the Emerly Weberly and Austin Sigma Broca one um it's here I'm back I just want to do a quick update I did wind up reading the first like 52 pages and as a fun who by Marissa Cantor I am absolutely adoring this book right off the bat and I think the reason I like it so much is that it deals with a topic that I don't think I've ever seen covered in a YA contemporary about theater. I've read a lot of YA contemporaries about theater or just books in general about theater. And this book deals with budget cuts. And I think that as an art teacher and as a theater teacher, I know about budget cuts because I experience them all the time in my district, especially during our pandemic year. It was really hard to get funding for anything. Um, but I just think it's very interesting. Like I'm really liking it. I've always loved like love to hate but I always like love to hate when it's built on more like there's really a history based on it. So you basically have these two characters, Natalie and Reed. And Natalie no, comes from a very, very arts focused family. Um, her dad is like a music teacher at her school and her mom is a writer. So she has a big fear of like the arts not being a viable career path. She just wants does this for fun. And so she has this plan that she is going to write her own musical so that she can get a, something to do her senior year because their budgets have been cut. But when all, 
all her plans change. She's basically pitted up against her dad and Reed, who is a part of the band club. And I think it's so interesting in this story that the be- like the, the people that are taking all the money is another arts installation. Normally, whenever I see it, it's normally like a sport. So I think that that was a really interesting twist. I also think that, you know, um, the pressure to be number one or the pressure to always win is something that talks about in this book. And I strongly see that, especially in regards to the Olympics this summer, where people only cared if you won a gold medal and nothing else. And I think that that is also the, the mentality that these two characters are having. But there's also family drama in this book because her dad is also the music coach. And I just think it's great. I, I'm really enjoying it. I think this book might be a very, very strong contender for a five-star read. But I will check in with you guys tomorrow when I come back from the city. I will probably make quite a bit more progress on this. But so far, I'm really happy that I picked it up. And I love Marissa Cantor's first book. But this book that's theater-based might be a new favorite. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, friends at home from a day of book shopping with my friends it was super fun i also made quite a bit of progress on as if on cue by marissa Cantor. i'm about 250 pages into this book i have to admit i am adoring this book and i think it's just because it mean obviously it has to do with theater which is something that's closely passionate about it also reminds me so much of an experience I had in high school um so basically the premise of this book is that all of the arts programs in her school got cut except for the band program because at the start of the book the band program is performing well they're very very well renowned they have a lot of clout behind them and her dad runs the band program and her arch nemesis is basically being tutored by her dad um but when that happens all the money to her program gets cut and she's um, involved in the drama club. Um, So she's very, very angry. She has this plan that she wants to put up, like a version, a parody sort of, or Frozen, sort of, that is loosely based on Frozen, but has to do with climate change, which I think is incredible. Like, I just think that's a really, really cool idea. So they also have a pranking war. The last pranking war book I loved was We Meet at Midnight by Jessica Pennington, and I didn't like that book at all. So when I heard pranking, I went into this book super hesitant because the pranking in that book got a little bit repetitive, wasn't as well crafted. The one thing I do like about this book is that you definitely do see the development of the pranking in the present, but you also understand it in the past. That element reminds me a lot of Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon because you also did have elements where you sort of saw how... Rowan and Neil, I don't know if those names are right, kind of got to the point that they are, and you also do see that with these two characters. Um, but they're suddenly, after their pranking war comes to a head and they both do something they definitely shouldn't have done, um, they, they're sort of forced to work together on turning Melted into a musical. And as a theater teacher, this is a really good way of looking at the the importance of cooperation and how teamwork and cooperation is really, really key. It's not always easy. I remember when I was in high school, we, we decided we were going to turn little wonder, um, not little Alice in Wonderland into a musical. And it was the hardest thing we ever did because there was like 36 of us and we all had to work together to make sure that this play became a musical. It's a really, really hard skill. And I don't think kids, especially in this recent pandemic time have been taught cooperation and working together but the romance is really develop on developing on me as well this book also has a strong focus on jewish culture which i think is pretty awesome we don't have we don't get to see that nearly enough we've been seeing it a little bit more like her first book i think had jewish characters i'm pretty sure laura silverman has been doing it rachel and solomon has been doing it so we've definitely been getting a lot more jewish representation in contemporary stories and i think that's really just so about goddamn time that we had some representation because yeah i just think it's really really awesome but i'm loving this book quite much the romance is really growing on me the musical is growing on me i am loving this book quite a bit i am so happy that i picked it up um i doubt i'm gonna finish this today but if i do i will definitely report back i'll probably report back when i get up to page like 300 and see where we're at and what time of night it is it's about six o'clock. I just got home from, from adventuring in the city. So if I decide to read any more tonight, I'll definitely update you guys. But definitely 
this is a contender to be enough like to be a five star reproduction for this reading vlog, which I'm really jazzed about because I was just sort of picking random books, but I am loving this book. This book might actually beat her first book, but so far, really, really solid. Definitely, it, and also does deal with a lot of friendship dynamics. And another thing I really like, sorry, this is like a long tangent, but I feel like I haven't updated you guys, and I did read a lot this morning on my train ride to and from the city. Um, I feel like this book is set in my in like my middle school right now that I am working in like it's just so interesting and like so diverse and so just seamlessly diverse it's sort of like what I read wild card wild card and war cross that series by Mary Lou the diversity was just so seamless like you don't even think about it but she does it so well and I'm really in love with the characters but also the friendship elements are so good they do they they deal with a lot of complicated topics there's also the complicated relationship she has with her dad also the discussion of is the arts a viable career which um natalie and reed have two very different opinions on which i'm very like i'm just intrigued by both their opinions but such a solid read sorry to talk your ear off but definitely a really really strong start from the street and I will update you guys anymore if I wind up reading tonight if not I'll just update you guys tomorrow bye bye friends back and it's I'm finally able to sit outside it is not as humid as it's been which is so exciting because I love summer so I'm gonna sit outside as much as I can the next three weeks before I'm forced back to work but I did want to say that this morning I did want to finishing As If On Q by Marissa Cantor I really really enjoyed this book there was a miscommunication trope pretty far into this book that had me want to throw my book across the room but it was handled in a way that I didn't hate I just love this book I thought it was great I thought that there was a lot of stuff that Natalie went through as a character which I really liked there was also a lot of communication stuff and there was also a lot of stuff in this book that like I think pulled on the past which I really respected and I would give this book five stars for review I think I might like this book a little bit more than her, her first book because there was such strong friendships developments. It was also a male-female relationship, boyfriend, like just a friend that I love. You never get to see that in YA. It always goes in a romantic direction. I just loved all the side characters. I love the relationship she had with her parents. I love also the talk about the arts as a career. I love the focus on cooperation, communication, and last minute adjustments to a show, which as someone that has worked in the arts, it happens all the time. You plan, you plan, you plan. Last minute something happens and you have to make a change. But it was handled so well. Really, really liked it. And I would wind up giving this one five stars to review. So, so far, my five star reading vlog production has been pretty good. I did really enjoy the graphic novel for Rosie Jackson. This one has been pretty good. So, sorry if you heard that. I'm going to pick up one of my, um, I am going to read Finney Dowling is Killing It. But I want to read one of my, um, I just got like the it's the Percy Jackson short story collection or like the Cursed Carnival so I think I'm gonna read that um, right off the bat and I'm gonna try to read one of those stories because um, it's been a bit since I've read one I um, mean this has to do with um, Sal and Gabby so I'm gonna read this see how I feel about it and then I'll probably check in with you guys I might read a couple of them if I want to, but I'm definitely going to start fin Finley down a bit at some point today. But yeah, I'm going to go read a little bit, watch a little bit of True Crime, and I'll update you guys when I'm done with Calamity Juice by Carla Hernandez, which features the characters from Sal and Gabby Break the Universe. Hey friends, to you a quick update. It's almost 2.30. I did wind up reading the first two stories in my Chris Carnival collection, which is all the Rick Riordan short stories. I read the one about Sal and Gabby, which I liked. I feel like I think I probably should have read book two before I read the story because I was a little bit confused. Totally my fault. I really did like the Arusha one, which was focused on a mission that they had to go on for one of the gods, and it had to do with love, and I think love and romance is going to be played very heavily into the end of that series but i'm gonna take a little bit of a reading break i'm gonna go do a workout maybe go for a walk if it doesn't rain it looks like it might rain um but i also do want to like make some more reading progress i want to toss in one of my audiobooks as i'm working on potentially go for a walk um but when i come back i'm gonna read a little bit more and i'm gonna start finley donovan is killing it i <laughs> have to charge my kindle but i'm gonna go do that go for a walk listen to a little bit of my audiobook and then i'll check in with you guys when i'm ready to start reading again and i'll give you guys an update about my audiobooks also because i did make some reading progress on um the falconer by elizabeth may before 
in the morning when I, when I want to move out so I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye, friends. Just do a quick check-in. It's about 7.24. I did wind up getting reading my the first six chapters in Finley Don Donovan is Killing It. Right off the bat, I really like her as a character. She is a single mom. She's recently divorced. She has two kids. She's also a, a romantic suspense writer, and she's not really living her best life right now she her ex-husband is trying to take her kids away from her and she has writer's block on this book she's trying to write but when she goes to meet her agent at a Panera to share this story with her the woman thinks that she is a professional hitman because she's talking about things that a professional hitman and this woman that basically hires her is going to give her fifty thousand dollars to kill her husband and right off the bat, I'm really liking that. I think that that's such an interesting premise for, like, a book. It reminds me a little bit of, um, I read the Dial A for Andes recently, and it was, like, another really interesting take on, like, a cozy or, you know, like, a mystery novel. And I really like that a lot. I thought that twist was really interesting. This is a twist that's also really, really unique and really, really different. I'm really liking it as well. Um, but, yeah, I'm I'm very happy with it. I will admit I'm a little bit tired. I went to the city yesterday and I had some coffee. And I don't think I should have done that because it makes me super tired the next day because I don't have that boost. But I, I do want to finish the Mysterious Benedict Society tonight. That is my plan of attack. I didn't get to do that last night because I fell asleep a little bit early. But I will report back tomorrow. I have fallen so far off of my... Um, my morning routine so I'm trying to get back to that I only have a couple more weeks off so I really am trying to soak like soak everything in and really enjoy it but I'll check in with you guys tomorrow and we'll talk more about this before I head to yoga and yeah bye friends it is a little bit later I didn't wind up updating this morning because I didn't have I didn't I didn't read anything else but in my commuting to my yoga class and also like coming back home I did wind up reading a little bit more of Finley Donovan is killing it I just like her as a character a lot I think the reason I like her so much is I really don't like her ex-husband so like their combativeness and her trying to find a way to work as a novelist and her be him basically dismissing that and threatening not only her her house but also her relationship with her kids and also threatening to take her kids away from her is very very compelling and then you also have this plot point where she's basically being accused of being a hit woman and gets herself into this really really complicated situation. I really do like that. I think it's another interesting take on like a cozy mystery that I've never really read before. Again, I said this in a previous clip, but sort of reminds me a little bit of Dial A for Andes because that was so different and this is sort of in the same vein, but I like her as a character quite a bit. I don't think I've read a character that has kids in a while, like a romance or maybe it's not even a romance, but at least not right now, um, but I'm really liking it. So I'm also watching some um, YouTube videos as my background noise. I also did finish the Mysterious Benedict Society last night, which I was super happy about. Um, I actually did it. I wasn't the biggest fan of the book series, but I do like the TV show. So my plans for today is I'm going to sit outside and read for a little bit, as you can see, because it's not as humid as it was the past week. I'm also supposed to go finally meet my niece, who's over a year, and it just with COVID and the pandemic and everything, and me working in a school, that hasn't really happened. We haven't had like any free time so i get to go meet her which i'm super excited about um but yeah i'm gonna read a little bit more of this um but yeah so far i'm really liking it it's been a bit since i've read any adult um like cozy mysteries other than those that i've read early in the year but i like it i think it's fun and i like that she's a writer and i just think it's a fun fun read i just broke my necklace oh my goodness um all right well i will talk to you guys when i read a little bit more from the down is killing it bye friends it gives me like dial a for anti vibes and i have to admit i'm liking it i'm liking how the characters are sort of developing and we're getting more people to play with i also like how she is actually writing a story in this loosely inspired by her own experience it's just very very fun i am gonna go for a walk i think i'm gonna pick up the um non-fiction that not, not the non-fiction book but the non-falconer book that i'm reading i'm gonna go for a walk um let this charge a little bit i also am gonna scrapbook a little bit before i head out to see my niece and my nephew but I'll check in with you guys when I make a little bit of progress because I didn't listen to that audiobook yesterday and I do have two women in the middle of listening to. But I did get up to page 120 and chap chapter chapter 17, 32%. I will say if you have read Dial A for Aunties, it does scream a little bit familiar, like very, very eerie familiar in some ways, especially in regards to the murder element of the story. 
but nothing else is really similar. I think that they are different. There's a lot of differences in the stories, but the murder element is similar in those two. So if you did like Dial A for Aunties, I would definitely recommend you pick up this one, or if you or I would definitely recommend that one because there's sort of a different take on a cozy mystery and I'm liking that twist a lot because I've read a lot of well I've never read a lot but I've read one consistent series that is very very formulaic so I'm gonna go for a walk try to enjoy the sunshine while we have it and the pretty days and I will update you guys when I read when I'm back and have read a little bit more bye friends back. Uh, last night was so nice I got to see finally got to meet my niece and see my cousin who I haven't seen in like about two years since this whole pandemic began so that was super nice I got to meet my niece I got to like see my nephew again and I found out I think he's a little reader which definitely gives me some ideas for holiday presents but I also am waiting for it to pour so I'm sitting outside and hope that I can get some reading done outside but I'm also listening to two audiobooks I'm listening to Hex in the City which is like a contemporary sort of book with like a magical twist I'm about 50% done with that and I'm also lis listening to The Falconer by Elizabeth May, which is a fae book that I'm liking. I'm not loving it, but I am enjoying it. I definitely do like all the characters. But I also did get up to page 210, so 57% into Finley Diamond is killing it. It's very, very, very fun. I like it a lot. I like the main character. I like how the twists and turns are kind of developing in the story. And it's definitely becoming a fun read. And I really just like the main character as well. I just think she's fun. And I like all the twists and turns. I like that she's an author. And I just like, I really don't like her um, ex-husband at all. He's kind of a jackass and a jerk. Um, but it's making the plot points with the murder be really, really interesting and really, really compelling. Also, there was some stuff at the start of the book that is kind of coming into play as the book progresses. And it's definitely really, really, like, just a fun read and engaging. And I can't wait to see what happens. So... I'm going to go back to reading. I'll update you guys when I get up to probably like 80%. Um, it's about 11, so I'm probably going to eat, read a little bit, get some dinner, lunch, and then I'm probably going to go for a bike ride. I hope to stay, starve off the rain. But yeah, I'll update you guys when I read a little bit more. Bye, friends. It is about 12.10. I think I'm going to chance a bike ride because it's not raining yet, and I do like to go on a bike ride daily i'm probably gonna pick up my other audiobook this morning i did listen to the falconer so i'm gonna try to listen to hex in the city and see if i can make some progress on that but in other news i got up to page chapter 32 page 252 in finley donovan is killing it really liking this book quite a bit i'm actually think i'm enjoying this book more than dial a for andy's even though at the start the plot points were very very similar but I just think I love Finley's character. I love all the side characters that we've been getting. It reminds me a little bit of the Hannah Swanson series because there's a lot of side characters and I enjoy that a lot. Um, I also think there's a lot of romance options for Finley, which you don't normally see in like a cozy mystery, which I don't even know if I would call this a cozy mystery, but I'm just really fond of it. Also like she's a mom, so you get to see her kids. Um, you know, there was a moment that sort of made me have different feelings about her act, so I'm really, really liking it. But I'm going to go for a bike ride and hope to squeeze one in before the rain comes. It has been a very, very humid summer, which means it gets so hot, and then it rains, and then it stays humid. So I ha you have to get your bike rides in when you can. But I will talk to you guys when I'm back. I'm going to go charge my Kindle for a little bit because it always dies. Um, and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye, friends. Okay, and I did wind up getting up to page 300 in Finley Donovan is Killing It. Really liking it. I'm very intrigued to see how the last, like, 60 pages is going to turn out. I have a theory, and I will be curious to see if my theory sort of come true at the very, very end. I think this is a delight. It's probably going to be, like, a four-and-a-half-star read for me. Maybe I'll see if the twist surprises me dramatically. But I really am enjoying it. I like that she's a writer. I like characters that are writers. I also like cozy mysteries that are sort of unique and different. I have read a lot. Um, well, I've read the Hannah Swanson series, and those mysteries tend to be very, very predictable. But the ones I've read recently this year, like Arsenic and Adobo, this one, and also Dial A for Andes, really turned sort of the mystery stuff on its head, and I really enjoyed that. So I'm going to read the last 60 pages of this, and then I'll come in and check in with you guys. It really, really might rain, so... The next time you guys might see me, I might be inside. I also did wind up getting about two hours, two and a half hours left in Hex in the City, which is just a contemporary book that has like a magic twist in it. Um, it's just fun. I got that recommendation so long ago from Book Hype, which isn't even around anymore. 
but it's very, very fun. It reminds me of, like, a less dramatic version of the Mortal Instruments series with, like, a contemporary twist. So, I really, really like that one as well. Um, but, yes, I will definitely give you guys an update when I probably finish this book and we will chat a little bit more about it but i'll talk to you guys in a little bit bye friends i took a little bit of a break i scrapbooked a little bit i actually finished my second scrapbook pair that i've been working on one of my friends is from my friend sam her daughter was recently born and then my friend natalie her daughter was born in november and december they were both born so I have been working on those projects all summer and have finally caught up to where we are. I'll have to do another little tail end at the end of the year to like wrap up those scrapbooks. But my next focus I'm going to put on is my niece Liliana who is now 14 months old. But I finally am able to work and devote some time to her scrapbook which I'm really excited about. But that's why I took a little bit of a break. I worked out. Um, I did wind up finishing Finley Donovan is is killing it really like that book found it was so fun and just really enjoyable definitely takes another twist on a unique cozy mystery definitely excited for the sequel and i thought some of the plot points was like a little bit like it kind of fell into the character's lap and it got wrapped up a little bit quickly in some parts but i am really excited for the sequel so i'll definitely be checking it out so my next goal is i'm going to read two stories from my cursed carnival um book it's coming out from disney it's like it's like all short stories featuring all the characters in the rick Riordan presents first so i'm gonna read the next two the next one is from the storm runner series which i have read the first two books i still need to read the last book but hopefully i'm not it won't be as confused as i was with the sal and gabby one we'll see I'll report back when i'm done with it and then i'll share my thoughts um before i start the next story bye friends back last night before i went to my muggle cast virtual meetup I did wind up finishing my two short stories in The Cursed Carnival, which is the anthology by Laura Friarden. I'll be honest, I always struggle with short story collections, but this one is definitely one I'm really liking. I think out of those two stories, I would say I probably preferred the one um, with, oh, I can't remember the name of it, um, The Dragon Pearl. There was a short story about the, the, those characters, and I also read the short story about the Stormrunner characters, which I also did like. Um, those were definitely what, two of my favorites. Um, the only one I really struggled with was, um, the first one because I hadn't read Sal and Gabby Breaks the Universe. The next story I'm going to read is Tristan Storm and I've never read those books. So if I read that and I'm intrigued, I might add that to my TBR and probably read it relatively before the end of the month. But I did want to say that I did wind up choosing my next read. So it is My Contrary Mary by the Lady Janies. This follows Mary Queen of Scots, a prince and the daughter of Nostradamus. I always think these books are super fun. It also is massive. It's like about 500 pages, but I tend to read it pretty quickly. Last night, I also did watch a couple of more episodes of the Magical Society, um, which I have a couple more episodes left. I'll probably finish that tonight, but my goal is to make a little more progress. I am also going to go to my ear, nose, and throat doctor and figure out what was happening with my neck early last week when I had that issue. So, But I'm gonna go try to read a little bit of this and see if I can maybe sneak outside and read outside. Um, but it's supposed to pour all day, so I don't know how that's going to go. But I do want to doing all my morning stuff. Also, update, I did finish doing my journal, which I did not think was going to happen because I am such a disaster at journaling. But I started, let's see, when did I start this journal? I started this journal January 1st, and I did it so about half the year. I also did have some other stuff in here that I did throughout it, but I actually really liked it. I think... In the summer, I'm less likely to journal because I don't have, like, that many exciting things happening. But this weekend, I will sort of plan my new journal and add some stuff to this and, like, do stuff over. So that's my plan is to do my new journal at some point this weekend. But I'm going to go read. I might read outside for a little bit. Um, and before I head to the doctor, I will try to update you guys on my contrary Mary. Bye, friends. Checking back in. I am trying to get as much sun as I can this summer. <laughs> so that's why I'm sitting outside a lot and you guys will probably see my new fence in the back. But I did want to say that I, you know, I went to yoga, I finally went to the doctor, nothing was found about my neck because the lump has vanished. So that's good. It just says it's probably like a swollen lymph node, which makes sense. Um, but I did want to be reading 104 pages of My Contrary Mary. I really did like their other two books that, they, that, that those trio of characters or authors wrote. 
never got to read my Calamity Jane. I think I'm going to save that for the fall because it has to do with werewolves. This, so you follow three different characters, and it's the story of Mary, Queen of Scots, who had a very disastrous life from what I remember, but this book will hopefully give me a little bit more context. The one thing I love about these books is the narrators, because the narrator is a character in the story and sort of takes you out of the story and gives you guys like the real historical context, which I think is fun. But this book follows three characters. Mary, Queen of Scots, can turn into a mouse. Um, every book, there's a character that can turn into something. I don't know if it was in, in, in My Plain Jane. I think there was. I can't remember. But definitely in My Lady Jane, there was. So Mary can turn into a mouse. And then you have Frances, which is her betrothed, who she's going to marry, the soon-to-be king. And then you have Nostradamus' daughter, Ari, who everyone thinks is this great, amazing seer. But she's really... She's really not that great at seeing things in the future, but she's really good at potions. So those are the three point of views you're, car you're following. I really, really like these books. They're very, very fun, very, very quick-witted, super engaging. So I am going to try to read another, like, 50 pages, and then I'll probably give you guys another update. But the one thing I liked about these books is that they, they you know, they kind of take a story that we all know and kind of twist it with magic and stuff, and I think that that's fun. It also does give you a lot of historical content, so... And I love books about royalty and stuff like that. So I'm going to read a little bit more of this, and then I'll give you guys another check-in. I also have about an hour and a half left in The Falconer by Elizabeth May, which is the series for the Time Warp YA book club. I'm enjoying it. I like the fairy elements to it. I do like the characters. I'm definitely going to give the second book a shot, and I'm going to try to read it physically because I don't have any ebooks for those. And then I'll sort of decide how I feel about it the rest of the series if I'm going to continue but I am enjoying it I'll definitely finish it um so yeah I'm going to read a little bit more of this and give you guys a check-in and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit bye bye I'm back it's about seven o'clock I just wanted to take me a shower relaxing a little bit <laughs> but I do want to be getting up to page 200 in My Contrary Mary by the Lady Janies I'm really liking this book I forgot how enjoyable these are I think all the characters are really interesting and compelling I love the trans formation element in this story i do really like it i think there's also some lgbtq representation which i was definitely not expecting and there's a lot of trickery and like deception with mary's character like within her friend group which i definitely was not expecting i also really like francis's character which is his, which is her betrothed which i wasn't necessarily expecting to like as much as i do but their narrator comments are just so funny um, and it's just, it, like, it's so enjoyable, like, it's just very, very fun. I also like that, like, Nostradamus' daughter, Ari, is, like, getting premonitions of the future, which are so pop culture -y. and, like, you know, there was one about Frozen, there was one about the Titanic, so it's just funny, like, her, what her prophecies really are in regards to, like, our real world, I just think it's very, very fun. I just, I'm so curious, like, where this book is gonna go, because, like, I know the actual story, but, like, you know, they always kind of twist it and turn it to hilarity and drama, so I'm gonna read a little bit more. I definitely do want to finish a few things tonight, TV-wise, um, and probably get a snack, but I don't know what I'm gonna get, so I'm gonna go read a little bit more. My goal is to finish my YouTube queue. I have, like, six videos left, because I think one's, like, yeah, one's a workout. We'll do that one tomorrow. Um, but I have, like, six videos left, so I'm probably going to finish my YouTube queue and then, like, see what time it is, and then I'll probably, like, go watch something. <laughs> but I'm really liking it so far. Tomorrow's also going to be my R&D day. I have to film some stuff. I have to, like, get prepped for next week. I'm also going to start thinking about September, which I have to start filming videos for September because I'm going to be going back to work. Um, so if I want to pre-film anything, I'm going to also figure out tomorrow my fall TBR, so I gotta do some Amazon, like, Barnes & Noble hunting and stuff like that. I also wanna do one more last city day where, like, I'm by myself, and I really haven't done that since before the pandemic. I really haven't gone to the city by myself yet. I mean, I've always gone with people, but there's some things I like to do that, like, no one else wants to do with me, so I'm gonna sort of plan that plan attack tomorrow. I'm also getting my hair done next week, so a couple of little R&D stuff to, like, wrap up my year. But I'm going to go read a little bit more of this, and when I get up to page, like, 250, or when I'm done with my YouTube queue, I'll give you guys an update. Bye, friends. Here, sorry for, sorry for the weird angle. 
Um, <laughs> I just want to do a quick update. It's Friday. I normally do a lot of my errand stuff. I have a bit of cleaning to do. It is the 20th of August. So we're starting to wrap up my time at home. So I want to do a cup. I want to film a couple of videos and do all that stuff. Um, also just clean a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's sort of my plan for today. I hope, I hope to finish reading My Contrary Mary today and also finish Hex in the City at some point. So those are the two books I hope to finish. And then when I'm done, I'll probably wrap up this reading vlog and start another reading vlog. But I'm going to go organize, clean, get all my ducks in a row, and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye, friends. Hey, hair, I'm back. That took much longer than I thought. I had to film a couple of, I actually filmed two different YouTube videos, and I organized my fall TBR. I also spent most of the morning switching over my old journal to my new journal. Um, and I've been loosely participating in the Avengers Reading Challenge, like, all year. But I am going to try to be a little bit more involved towards the end of the year because I would like to actually finish all my boards. So they're doing a prompt this weekend, and that will probably be featured in my next reading vlog. But I did wind up when I was kind of running around. I did wind up getting up to page, like, 360 in My Contrary Mary. This book is super fun, super delightful. I really like all the characters. I think it's just such a fun world, and I think it's just all really, really... I really like all the points of views. Normally, when I get to books like this, I kind of like one point of view more. But they're all super fun, and I just really like Mary as a character. I think it's a fun twist. I think the narrators are super funny. It's definitely going in a direction I wasn't necessarily predicting. So my goal is to finish this tonight, um, which I have about, like, 150 pages left. So I think I could probably do that. Um, I'm just going to try to watch some, like, older true crime videos because um, anything else I really need to watch is, like, stop and go. So I want to finish this book first. So I'm going to go do that. Maybe get up to chat page, like, um, three, 400, and then I'll give you guys another update. Bye, friends. Hey, here. I'm back. I did want to say that I did wind up getting up to page 410 in My Contrary Mary. There is a, there will be a small connection between this book and my Lady Jane, which is the first book in that series. So there is a connection in to those two books, which I do always sort of like. I like companion books that sort of have a connection to them. So I am going to keep reading, but I'm loving this book and the characters. It's just so fun. It sort of, I sort of felt how I felt when I was reading Pride and Prejudice. Like, you know the characters in a sense, so you sort of know them a little bit. But the Janies just write, just write such fun characters and engaging characters. And the narrator really is a character in all these stories. And I just think it's fun. Really, really enjoyable. But yeah, so I'm definitely going to keep reading. Um, I'm happy to see what the connection to the book is and i will keep reading and report back when i can bye friends sorry right here i did last night i did one of finishing my contrary mary and i like this book i would give this book like five stars for review 4.75 stars i really enjoyed it i think at the end of the story my favorite character definitely changed and grew if, if i went in sort of thinking my favorite character was going to be mary but i actually really liked francis's character quite a bit and the narrators are just so funny this is a behemoth of a book, but I read it in, like, two days, and it was just so, like, fast-paced, so adventurous, and it really took history and sort of taught it in, like, a fun way, but this is, like, an alternative history. Ma Mary and Francis have such a diff has such a more happy ending than the real story, but I really enjoyed it and gave it five stars. This was me trying to bust my reading slump reading vlog. So I started this reading vlog by finishing reading, um... Percy Jackson, the graphic novel, The Lightning Thief. I like that one. I enjoyed it. I definitely have to go and sort of continue reading that series. Then I read um, um, As If On Cue by Marissa Cantor, which I also really liked and gave that one five stars. And Finley Donovan is Killing It, I also read and gave that four stars. And also in this reading vlog, I did want it finishing The Falconer by Elizabeth May, which I gave three stars to. So very, very good. Definitely a strong read. I'm going to go try to start my next reading vlog and I'll talk to you guys for that one. So let me know what are some books you have been reading towards the tail end of the summer and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, friends.